Welcome back to the Roundtable, MLG's first Dota 2 talk show. I'm MY John, your host, and with me tonight, of course, Toby Wan, as well as Purge. Guys, we've had a lot of interesting discussions so far, talking about summer events and uh, the result of them, how teams are looking going into TI3, and uh, the potential outlook for those teams. Let's go ahead and talk about a couple of things that came up already. I'm going to actually put you guys in the spot a little bit, make you make a couple of picks here or there. Good. But earlier, Purge, you said that of course, looking back to last year, 2012, this summer, Na'Vi really struggled. In fact, we saw some fans calling for Arsart off the team, which was pretty ridiculous in hindsight, considering how well they performed and he performed as a part of that during the actual International 2. On the flip side, we saw MTW, they won Summer Dreamhack. They had a really good record. They won other competitions like Pro Dota, as well as TPL Masters. Going into the international, people thought, perhaps this is a team to watch out for, but they tanked. They were the first team eliminated. I looked through the Join Dota archives, and it's actually MTW first team out was the headline, and I found that pretty uh, indicative of what their performance was like at the actual t international. So I want to know one team that's underachieving right now that can potentially show up at the international out of nowhere and one team that's doing well that may fall off. You can use either Western or Eastern teams. Really curious to see what you guys have to say about this. So you want us to name a team that we think is going to fail. and But one they're team doing we... pretty well. I want, I want kind of deceptiveness. I want a team that's not doing well. You pick them to maybe have high hopes. <laughs> And then a team that's doing pretty well that's going to fall short. I, I mean, it's a little bit of an ask for the first show, too, but we're going to make this interesting. Put you guys on the spot. Uh, middle of the pack. Um, I, I personally, my favorite team is Team Liquid. I would love to see them do well, but I think there's a chance that they'll get bottom eight. So I think that would probably be my pick for a possible failure. But I think they could also do okay if they, if they play really well, like if they hit their peak. They could do really well, and I don't know what the last couple weeks of bootcamp have been like. That's probably my pick for possible failure. So you think they the come a little bit short? They're a, you're a favorite of them, of course. You're a fan of yeah, them. And definitely. you think that even though they're prepped, they might drop a little bit short. Do you have one team that yeah. we might be surprised to see do well at the event? And I think Tongfu has potential for doing really well. Um, I like a lot of their strats. I like their occasional Doom pick, and um, I think their players are really solid as well. So I could see Tongfu maybe surprise people. They did it last year. It wasn't exactly the same players, but um, I think they could do really well. Yeah, I think those are two good. Uh, Toby, one team that's going to surprise us and one team that maybe is going to disappoint us. See, I, I, I don't want to do the whole disappoint thing. Cause... Oh. Uh, Just do it, I, man. I... Come on. We're all doing it. <laughs> we got to make it interesting. We got to make it interesting. Come on. Oh, man. I... It's, I I wanted I, I want to say the team which I think will surprise a lot of people is Fnatic EU. Uh, they've been playing like crap of late. Uh, they know they have, but I think they're a team which can be really creative and execute it beautifully. So I think Fnatic EU could surprise a lot of people. Um, I kind of want to say a team which is performing well is going to be performing bad because I would also like. Like, I'd like to go with Purge and say Team Liquid, but also I haven't really seen anything magical from Team Liquid of late that makes me say, yeah, they're going to do really, really well. Their performance during G1 was very iffy, um, and I haven't seen anything else that's really made me believe in them that I would bet my res. Uh, so, yeah, if I'm going to say a team which people might expect a lot of that wouldn't do too well, uh, it's still going to be Virtus Pro. And I and I can kind of I can kind of say that because I know the Virtus Pro guys and I I I've drunk with the Virtus Pro guys multiple times, uh, so I can say like they, they know at LAN events it's a real weakness for them, like it's a massive weakness for them. Online they seem to do a lot better, uh, but they really struggle with their CNG on a LAN event. So for me they're going to be one of those teams that could completely obliterate everybody and be in the top four, uh, but could also be an MTW kind of case and first team out. Or hopefully we never see a repeat of it, but it could happen. They pull a, a GG net from TI1, and that's not win a oh single game. Oh boy, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. <laughs> no, there's, there's only one team that's ever ever received the award of never winning a single game at TI, and yeah, that was GG net. Yeah, but they did pick Darks here once, so they were ahead of the curve in some regards. But actually, I want to ask you about Fnatic EU. Of course, the last land they were at was DreamHack Summer, and they kind of got eliminated in some not-too-fantastic way. It was the time dispute that kicked them out. Do you think they're going to come back with kind of a, a vengeance? I, I mean, this is a team that they're kind of renowned for their not land really. presence, <laughs> but do you think that kind of causes some motivation at the very least for them? 
I, I think that would cause annoyance more than anything else, but then they'll have a drink <laughs> about it and just forget about it. Uh, they're a team which, whenever you come to a LAN event, they're very carefree. They're very, very carefree. They're, they're just a whole bunch of guys that come to play Dota and have a lot of fun and normally be very creative and kick someone's ass. If they can do that, fantastic. It's, it's all basically serious business, business when the game is on, but outside of it, they're, they're a bunch of larrikins. It's, it's fun. They're a very, very fun team. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think DreamHack is going to be one of those things where they're like, ah, vengeance. <laughs> uh, I don't really see that happening. They don't uh, have that on their bulletin board, like using it for motivation, I guess. Okay, I'll, I'll take you guys off the spot. We'll go to a much more fun topic. Uh, this week, I believe Cyborg Mac discovered the coding for custom maps in Dota 2. I don't know about you guys, but personally, coming from Warcraft 3, custom maps were everything for that game. It really did introduce a whole new element. What do you like about it? What maybe do you not like about it? And what do you think it can do for Dota 2 overall? Well, it's important to remember that Dota 2 was a custom game. So I think anybody looking at custom games negatively can just stop talking, essentially. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, it's perfect to balance the game that you love with something that's within the client. And um, this is probably something that StarCraft 2 could have done better, for example. Like, mm. everybody loved Blizzard games because you could do something fun if you didn't feel like playing the, the sometimes stale regular game. So if I'm playing with friends and my stack is uneven and I don't want to have to carry some bads, I can be like, you know what? I don't want to play Dota right now. Let's play like Dire Tide or something. Like that's, it's the perfect example of being able to just hop away from what is maybe too competitive at times and maybe you're bored of it and you want to just enjoy yourself and if it's all within the client that's going to encourage more people to be like you know what i know you don't want to play dota but maybe you would like dire tide and you can play dire tide with somebody and then maybe one day they'll be like okay let's try the actual game and i think like i i see no negatives i, I don't even think it'll be possible to split the community that much with it either so i i don't know why it would ever be a bad thing personally yeah, man custom games were my release like you play dota 2 and it's just like it's serious so much of the time that by the like the only way I've been able to find a way to deal with it in Dota 2 is just to have stupid games. Um, like I was playing with Wagamama one night, somebody took out gem, and I spent the next 20 minutes trying to pull the gem from the fountain. Uh, that's just because I I, I want to <laughs> muck around in a game. I don't want every single time. Make sure your last hit. Make sure you take out a tower. Fight as a team. So no, I, I I want a whole, like a whole army of techies to run at my towers, and I've got to try and defend my line. I want to do those kind of TDs. I want to do malls. I want to I, I want to defend helms deep the old-fashioned way, like and pick Legolas because everyone else tries to take Legolas, and you got to get in there early. Um, but it's like this is the kind of stuff which I love to do. It's the nice, relaxing kind of stuff, and it's it's one of those things too. Like Valve, they did a lot of it in uh, I believe in Counter Strike. Actually, you have. Uh, maps which people actually sell so it's also another another place where people who are really creative who make games can can really like like it, they, they sell car, imagine castle fight like castle fight had a lot of competitions back in warcraft 3 imagine if you were the creator of castle fight and you're getting money for creating castle fight you can put that money directly back into tournaments or something like that or what's beyond that dota 2 becomes a platform for other games to develop. Like, as Perch said, it's where Dota was created. It was actually created back in custom maps of, uh, of Brood War, and then got transferred through into Warcraft 3, Frozen Throne, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's where Dota was created. Who knows what could be created? We could have Dota 2 being a, a fantastic game, everyone wants to play it, and then something from inside of Dota 2 will actually supersede Dota 2 because it may be better, it may be more. Uh, you, you just never know. And if the tools are made really nice, like like this is made by Valve. Like Valve made a, a, a <laughs> I remember when I when I got to have my tour of Valve when I was there for the documentary. Um, I went upstairs and in, uh, into one of the in the higher offices and uh, talked to the guys who made Portal, and they said that after they actually made Portal, they designed something which allowed you to create any Portal environment, and it was such a fantastic tool that they said if they actually created this. Before they created the game, the game would be made in probably half the time because they just make all their levels with this tool. It was that great. And if Valve take the time out and they make something which is really dynamic, uh, we could see all other custom games being put to shame. And that was one of those things which I got really frustrated. Like I played around with the StarCraft 2 mod tool as well because I, I love making my own maps. Uh, and I used it and instantly I felt uh, depressed because I didn't feel it was a really good mod tool. Like, there's some great custom maps which are out there uh, for StarCraft 2. In fact, I 
playing a lot of them just to keep my sanity. Uh, but really, it's it's not freedom. It's it's not a great engine as well in my mind to to play custom games on. And I think the dynamicness and the and the smoothness of the Dota 2 engine. Uh, I think a lot of people can be creative, and we could be seeing a whole new subgenre of game being created just from it. Yeah, I mean, I want to go ahead and ask you guys some of your favorite mods from Warcraft 3. I know personally there's so many to choose from. You think of like Zoetar TD was really fun, Enfos. What do you guys think? What are some of your favorite things that maybe you like to see recreated through Dota 2 if possible? I am a little scared that people will just copy paste all of the stuff that currently exists in StarCraft um, yeah. and put it into the Dota client and have that stuff Don't like... Hopefully it's handled better than StarCraft 2 is, which um, it was the custom games were it was good that there was an easier way to join games without hosting because Warcraft 3 custom game hosting was a nightmare most of the time because you have to host a game. You'd sit there and like hope that enough people joined and hopefully like three people joined. And, and, and everyone's going to download and they <laughs> leak. Yeah, yeah. Then they download and then they book it because they're like, haha, I got your map and then they're out. I mean, yeah, but sure. StarCraft fixed those problems. But then what happened was all of the five most popular maps, people only played those. That's it. So there wasn't like the mix up that would occasionally happen. And they've made some progress in the last year or two to like add some new games and show them featured and stuff. That way there's more variety. But I just hope that people are creative and um, doesn't just reproduce all of the uh, the classics, I guess. To, to, so. throw, to throw another thing out there, what happens if people do start reproducing? Like I want to see Green TD come back. I want to see a lot of the malls come back. Technically, like I know the the whole conversation which happened between Blizzard and Valve of who actually owns the rights to uh, to Dota, to what it was created. Can would Blizzard technically be able to say like if you make Enfos, if you make uh, the 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 malls, if you make if you make uh, Risk, if you make Helm's Deep, uh, these kind of things that were created, can Blizzard challenge the rights for that? I don't to think Do that would does be Dota a two own anything. Because Dota 2 wouldn't be making those custom games, it'd be some fan porting the game into the game. Like, for example, you can go in StarCraft 2 right now and I'm sure play something that's called, like, World of Warcraft Roleplay. Like, that's some random guy who made a World of Warcraft custom yeah. game within StarCraft but 2. I, I'm just wondering, though, like, legally where it all stands. I think that's going to be one of those things that Valve's going to have to look into to see... Like, some guy can make a small little game and, and Blizz will be like, eh, maybe I'll have 100 people play it, who cares? Uh, but then you have Valve give a tool which lets people create everything which could have been yours. Like, what if we get an exact copy of StarCraft inside of Dota 2? That would be wild. <laughs> yeah, but like, I, you do bring a good point. Do they need to have permanent lawyers just at each other's throats? I, I mean, it would be definitely a little bit of a debate. But uh, on, on the positive end, uh, I mean, we're definitely going to see a lot more. What's it going to do for the player pool? I, I did hear, I think it was IX Mike said that it might dilute the talent in Dota 2 because people are going to have something else to go to. <laughs> but I, I, I don't see it diluting the talent. <laughs> I, I see it attracting a lot more people because uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it basically turns a game which is very set, like most people say, 5v5. Like, Dire Tide was fun, but it was still the same map. If, if you create something which is just so dynamic, you're going to appeal to such a wider audience that people will play. I think Perch said this like, just earlier today, uh, early tonight, um, that like people play a mall and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll try Dota 2. Like it's, it's a lot better. It's a lot better. It gives people variety and it keeps them coming back to the same platform and still like you can have a lot of custom games there, but with the integration of the competitive scene into the public client, when someone loads up a game, they can see a watch tab. They will see tournaments. They will basically say, if I come here for a mall, I still know that IG is playing LGD right now, and I can watch this. It's just better for all. Yeah, and you know what I was thinking is the, the longevity of the game. Uh, I mean, directly associated with custom maps and stuff like that. People, you, we can log on to Warcraft 3 right now, and we could still play whatever custom game we want, honestly, because if people just keep playing that over time because they have so many options. You don't have to log off of the specific game and go play a different game like you do right now with Dota 2. You can go ahead and within that play a game that maybe interests you a little bit more or lets you have a relief from facing those sweet stacks or those Dark Falco stacks over and over again. But uh, of course we diverge a little bit. So is there anything in particular, do you want to see them build uh, an editor so it's easier for the people or something along those lines, something you really want Valve to do that facilitates custom map making? I'm under the impression it will be an editor and probably the thing I'm most excited about is that, I mean, StarCraft 2 used about this before StarCraft 2 came out, but they, they hyped being able to monetize your custom maps never happened. 
it's been over two years, but yeah. we are very aware that Valve has a monetization aspect included. So I'm sure there's going to be, I'm assuming there's going to be a custom map maker and there's going to be a way to monetize it for people. And that's going to be more people being able to make something and add value to the game. And we, we all know that Valve is always ready to reward those people that adds value to the game. So I'm just really excited for, for the custom maps that are going to come out. I assume it's Same. pretty much guaranteed at this point. It, it instantly custom maps come out. We'll already be looking into running custom map competitions. <laughs> just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If, it'll if be fun to watch. Yeah, I, I'd like to have an Enfos showdown. It's, it's, it's going to give to uh, like us streamers who we cast Dota every day. Five v five Dota. Like if we, if I had something like Enfos to cast, I'd be like, yeah, I like this. If there's like soccer in Dota two, I'd be like, hell yes, I like this. <laughs> like you have you have so many different things that you could do. It's going to give so much diversity to the streaming audience too. And for streamers, like like Purge wants to stream pub game. Someone like Dendi wants to live stream. And if you have Dendi playing like soccer in Dota two. So many people will, more will want to watch him because he's doing something different as opposed to, ah, I'm going like rando build on a pudge. Like, that's entertaining. But if you had him playing something else or playing with some friends, playing like uh, the old classic Enforce or things like that, like, it, it would be so entertaining to watch and see his reaction. And like, like, that for me, I think will actually boost the streaming audience more than anything else. Like, the audience that's inside Dota 2, great, but the diversity for what people view. Uh, when it comes to the engine of Dota 2, the sky is the limit when it comes to custom games. If yeah. the editor is really good, and if these different games can be found as well. And I really hope we don't have this whole, like, there's 5 million different versions of Enfos that everybody can buy. Because, But then again, I don't want to see it limited to just one person controls all of Enfos. Yeah, there's already some of that happening in the StarCraft 2 scene right now. They're adding, like, at the Red Bull land, they were having, like, fun show match things. And I've seen it pop up at like two or three tournaments now where they just play Star Strikers, which is this like soccer like so game. It's and so good, they just man. throw that into the stream. And the coolest part, it's like all pro StarCraft players playing a custom game that the average person likes. And everybody loves to watch like their favorite personalities do something else that they're not an expert at because it's, I don't know, it has a lot more potential for being fun. So I can't wait to see what happens with customs. It's gonna be really awesome. Yeah, and then you could even get people like casters involved so we could see them on a different platform where maybe they're not going to get yes. obliterated by some of these other players because God knows a casters versus pros match wouldn't really end up too well for most casters. It would not. I, I, I challenge you to <laughs> 1v1 line wars, Perch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I know how to play that game. I'm sorry. I think the fans would love it. Line wars? Oh, man. Like, that's just, yeah. Shame. Put yourself sorry. in front of the news, man, because they just feed. <laughs> So uh, we're going to go ahead and head up to the announcement that I promised before the show about MLG getting more involved with Dota 2. I'm going to tell you guys right now that MLG has decided that MLG Play, which is MLG's online competition website, is going to launch a tournament for North America and Europe starting Sunday, August 18th, which is going to be amazing for people to get involved with. Definitely check that out. Be sure to stay tuned at MLG for more information coming up. There's also going to be a ranking system coming up that is going to be able to evaluate player skills based on their participation in MLG play and other stuff like that. And then we're going to be able to rank them. But that is still somewhat secret. You'll get to hear more announcements about that in the future. So be sure to stay tuned to everything MLG. And we'll have more news coming up for you about Dota 2 soon. From there on, I want to go ahead and head over to the wrap of the roundtable, episode one. Of course, I've been Emma John, your host, but first, let's shoot it over to our guests and see if they have any shout outs for us. Toby Wan, thank you for coming on the episode. Do you have any shout outs you'd like to give? Uh, shout out to everyone who works so hard over at Join Dota to keep the website up and running. Uh, shout out to all the people who do follow me as well Twitter, Toby Wan Dota, Facebook, VK, all that kind of jazz. Uh, yeah, and just thanks for everyone who watches. And Purge, of course, do you have any shout outs you would like to give? Thank yeah, you for thanks. joining us, by the way. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> thanks, everyone, for watching my content over the years. It's been quite a fun ride. I'm so happy the game's finally launched. It feels like I've been doing this for 25 years already, but I'm sure Toby feels the same way. But the game's finally <laughs> out. It's really fun to watch everybody getting hyped. Um, and if you guys want to check out my content, you can go to my website at purgegamers.com or my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash purgegamers. And uh, should be a lot of good instructional content for new players. So if you guys have any friends that you're teaching, I would love if you referred them to me. Oh, thank you very much, guys, once again for joining us. This has made a very exciting first episode for the roundtable. I'm NY John. I'd like to give a shout out to my Twitter, of course, at NYJohnTV. Be sure to follow me there. You can get more updates about everything MLG related. 
And of course, we want you to tune in next week because this is going to be a weekly show. We'll be back with episode two of The Roundtable and definitely do more in-depth stuff about TI3 since that will be on the eve of the competition itself. So be sure to stay tuned there. And of course, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Everyone, we appreciate the viewership so much. And same time next week, we'll see you there. 